Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this. My name is Mary Jewett, and I work for the Lakes Environmental Association. And right around this time, every year, uh, we lead uh, a birds and blooms walk. So um, looking for spring migrating birds and nesting birds as well as wildflowers. Uh, and I am out at the Holt Pond Preserve today where um, we have a wealth of uh, biodiversity. And um, I'm going to bring you on a walk today. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, as you can here, hopefully, there's several bird species singing, and I'll try to um, help you identify some of these birds as we go along. So enjoy. I'm going to get geared up. So during a normal walk with LEA, I might not get quite so geared up, but since I'm out here alone today, and I am an amateur photographer, so I've got a lot of um, gear to put on. So first thing is a harness because when you are carrying a lot of gear it's nice to be able to wear it all without having to um, constantly stop and, and get your camera get your binoculars so first thing I've got some binoculars this is a nice new pair of um, Nikon Monarchs which I just got and I'm enjoying very much. So those hang down there. And then for the birds, uh, this is also a Nikon D750 with a um, 150 to 600 lens, which is what that is, if you're interested. And I also. I don't have enough clips right now, um, but this is another Nikon with a macro lens on it. So this is for any wildflowers we might see. So I'm geared up. I'm going to get started down the trail. Black-throated green warblers are a common species heard around the parking lot. They usually stay pretty high, so we got lucky today. This photo is from fall migration. I can't just focus on birds when this thing lands right in front of me. I could spend all day just in the parking lot. This is going to take forever. Let's speed up. Wild oats are one of the earliest wildflowers, and they have this beautiful yellow bell. I sometimes confuse blue-headed and red-eyed vireos. Blue-headed come earlier, and the call is slightly more musical, at least to my ears. I discovered this nest this spring. I hope they succeed. What do we have here? A black and white warbler. Some bird names are really spot on. There's a nice hobble bush that we need to check out down here. Hobble bush flowers are always spectacular in the spring. The large showy flowers on the outside of the disc are just that, showy. They do not possess any reproductive parts. It is widely thought that they are only there to attract pollinators to the smaller flowers on the inner part of the disc. Pileated woodpeckers have been busy here. We might need to find a new tree to put the trail marker on soon. Here we have a two for one, bunchberry and fringed polygala, or polygala, I'm not sure which. 
I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, I think bunchberry might be my favorite of the group today. Uh, I love the symmetry of the leaves and the petals. Fringe polygala is also called gay wings and is just odd looking and wonderful. Before we get on the boardwalk, let's check out this starflower. Starflower has this clump of asymmetrical leaves, I know, but it also has these sweet little star-shaped flowers. I'm hearing something really interesting out here. When using binoculars, keep your eye on the bird and then bring your binox up to your eyes. Don't look away from the bird or you might not find it again. This chestnut-sided warbler is just fearless, singing his heart out right at the beginning of the boardwalk. The common yellow throat is just that, common. There are at least a half a dozen of them singing on the boardwalk right now. I'm seeing females today as well, which means there are most likely nests scattered throughout the red maple swamp. spent a little bit too much time with those warblers, so let's continue down the boardwalk before I get distracted again. Distracted again. Here's a cool patch of pitcher plants, one of three carnivorous plants you can find at Holt Pond. This flower isn't fully developed, but when it is, it will attract bugs to the pitchers. Once the insects, bugs, or spiders go into the pitcher, they are prevented from leaving by these little downward facing hairs. There's water in the pitcher with an enzyme that breaks down the bugs and the plant absorbs the nutrients. Uh, we are coming up to the Hemlock Island. This is a really nice place to take a break on a hot day, kind of sits between a couple of boardwalks. Make sure you take a left when you reach the island so you don't miss the muddy river. I highly recommend walking down this trail in the early morning. The sun is just gorgeous. I always go quietly down this boardwalk as I've seen a lot of wildlife out here, like otters and beavers. You can just see the beaver lodge there on the left. Red winged blackbird. As you can probably tell, this video was not taken at Hope Pond. discovered this chickadee nest just on the other side of the Hemlock Island. You will have to take my word for it, because despite setting up the camera and leaving for 15 minutes, they never came back. This yellow warbler was slightly more cooperative than the chickadee, although he still stayed pretty high up in the trees. I'm hearing more chestnut-sided and yellow warblers here. Also, there are several alder fly catchers going back and forth. Let's try and find one. I found you, little alder fly catcher. Let me get closer. No. Oh, I found you again. No. Forget the alder fly catcher. Let's go.
gold thread can be found in many different habitats and is called such because of the bright yellow root. It has these beautiful delicate flowers with cool white antenna-like stamens. We definitely have a red-eyed vireo here. Let's try and get some footage of that. Perfect. We are coming up on the best spot. To get to the Holt Pond Boardwalk, you have to make your way through this beautiful spot shaded by hemlocks and pines. This is a great place to roll a few logs if you have the time. You should make the time. You never know what you'll find when you tip up a log. Make sure you do so slowly and carefully. Check out this beautiful redback salamander. They camouflage so well in this soil. Redback salamanders are strictly terrestrial, which means they lay their eggs under their logs instead of invernal pools. Now that we've gotten our hands a little dirty, we can get back on the trail. As we come down onto the final boardwalk before Halt Pond, you can see the tall grasses of the quaking bog spreading out. It looks fairly solid, but don't let that deceive you. Without the boardwalk, you could go straight through the vegetation. This is the perfect spot to sit and have a snack and take in the beauty of Holt Pond. As much as I miss the participants of our walks, I wouldn't be able to do this while leading a group of people. I think I hear a sparrow in the tall grass. Let's check it out. While not the most vibrant bird, he does have a wonderful song. It's always sad to leave Holt Pond, but we gotta get back on the trail. We're gonna just stay on the main trail instead of going back to the boardwalks. This is a nice little forest trail. Mosquitoes are out and about. Lots of squirrels and chipmunks yelling at me. To... Oh! What's that? Ooh. Winter wren? We've got to go look for that. Well, I found the wren along with some mosquitoes. smallest bird with the most beautiful song. Here's a nice little stand of Indian cucumber. They have this unique flower that is tucked under the leaves. This plant is aptly named as the roots smell and taste like cucumber. You have to pluck it a bit and rinse it, but then it is delicious. Here's a shot of me enjoying some Indian cucumber. And there's our executive director, Colin Holm, in the background. Every spring I listen for a Nashville warbler along this path. I've never been able to get a good photo because they stay really high, but the song is unmistakable. Our walk last year was rainy with not a lot of people, but we found the Nashville Warbler. Here is a sweet little black-throated blue warbler. One year at summer camp, we found an active nest. Black-throated blue warblers will have up to three broods per summer if they are successful. Dwarf ginseng is only found in a couple of places at Holt Pond. They grow low to the ground and have this wonderful orb of white flowers. 
think I'm hearing an oven bird in the woods here, so we're going to stay on the main trail. So we're going to take a left here. I am insanely excited to get this footage. Oven birds are pretty common, but despite being the loudest bird in the forest, they can be really hard to see. Well, we're getting to the end of the walk. The bugs are starting to come out, so this is a really good time to book it back to the parking lot. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that you uh, make it out to Holt Pond sometime soon, because it's a beautiful place and it's constantly changing. So uh, there's always something new to see. Thank you.